In northern Uganda, decades of brutal conflict have claimed and destroyed countless lives, leaving trauma, hunger and poverty. For most, the battle for education has been unrelenting, requiring exceptional talent and resilience to reach university level. Three young people share their stories. We used to go and sleep in the hospital because that was the only place that the rebels were fearing to go to. Sometimes we run when we have not yet even eaten and coming back in the morning you could even, sometimes you meet even dead bodies on the way. My dad as well was working in the hospital as a watchman to carry the dead bodies to take them to the mortuaries and all that. And he couldn't pay for my fees. I, I wanted even to commit suicide. I, yeah. I thought I wouldn't talk about this. And we studied within that same system where you have to sleep in the bush. It trains on you and you get to school late. One of my brother got abducted. He went. After now, he didn't come back. We don't know whether it's alive or not. We are five in a family and I'm a total orphan. I lost both of my parents. And you see when Christmas is coming, children with the parents will be enjoying good things, but for you, you are just there. Mm, you feel as if God has abandoned you, really. I really wanted to see a change in the future. I never wanted my children or my younger siblings to go through the same thing. Kenneth Norbert and Lucy, along with 87 other brilliant, resilient young Africans to date, are part of the TagDev program, funded by the MasterCard Foundation and implemented by the Regional Forum for Capacity Building in Africa, or RU Forum. The program, over eight years, will realize the potential of over 220 extraordinary young agricultural scientists, entrepreneurs and change makers from across Africa. Split between Uganda's Gulu University and Kenya's Egerton University, both known for pioneering new models of learning. I've been struggling with education all along and when MasterCard called me, I took some, almost a minute, without responding, then I just Let's give thanks to the Almighty Lord. Gulu University houses the world-renowned Institute of Peace and Strategic Studies. All faculties are centered on the restoration of life and prosperity in the area. If anything, the war brought the university because it came as a result of solving the problem brought by conflicts. The TagDev students, hailing from 16 African countries, are training where it is, perhaps, most relevant. Building technologies and knowledge that can be used in similar environments across the continent and beyond. Two years after the specialized tag dev orientation, we caught up with the first cohort of students. From then, that time of orientation up to now, there has been a massive change in my life. It happens both academically and socially. Kenneth is involved in research enhancing pig production and marketing for smallholder farmers in northern Uganda. I did grow malnourished at one point and I became more motivated to fight malnutrition after seeing my fellow children suffering in the hospital. She, as a teacher, she has, like a witness, a child who is hungry will never pay attention. People need the protein. Pork is the most consumed protein source in the world, in the region. That's what motivated me to go into Pigari project. The researchers working with interventions in artificial insemination, improved local feed trials and smell reduction using indigenous microorganisms in pig litter floors. Now we are in the Pigari unit with the pigs. This is how healthy they are looking. <laughs> 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 it has boosted our knowledge. They bring people and train from what? Our place. That is, it makes her happy, it pleases her. <laughs> when I go to the community, when they learn, they appreciate. Most of them are telling me that what? They are using the extra profits to send their children to school. <laughs> She'll buy iron sheets because she's <laughs> tired of what? Mm -hmm. And this one said, She'll buy land, make the piggery project to be like a farm or she wants to commercialize. Uh -huh, and this one also works like a classic dress. I like color pink and blue. Mm, pink and blue. At home, 
Kenneth has put his research into practice with a small piggery, the profits from which he is using to pay his younger brother's school fees. He plans to expand and commercialize his enterprise. In the meantime, he and his classmates have started a successful business as part of their course requirements. The business is profitable and lucrative. Supplying the rest and with the pork will come what in a new future. Norbert Okelo Kelo, pursuing his BSc in food science and agribusiness, took us back in time to his childhood at his home near the South Sudanese border. I come from this village. This is where I was born and this is where all my stories started from. Beside me is my dad, is my Kolokot, is the one who struggled with us and raised us. His father was a strict disciplinarian, pushing his children to excel academically, and Norbert achieved excellent results at school. Yeah, life here was not bad. It's a good place to stay in. Actually, I like it. But the war changed everything. It was a busy area. You sleep in the booth. It rains on you. You wake up in the morning to go to school. Sometimes you even don't go to school because you hear gunshots at any time. This was actually the area of the camp, so the school was generally surrounded by the camp. At that time, not all of us could access classrooms. We started under that mango tree, where you write down, you don't write in the book. We write in the soil. We are out for break, and we started just hearing gunshots. The rebel crowded the school. Some of our school members were taken. They are nowhere to be seen up to now. When the people returned from the camps, their homes and crops had been destroyed. There was nothing to eat, and they had become dependent on food handouts. Farmers tried desperately to grow what little they could. When they came back, they were very fearful because of the trauma that they had during the war. Most of the household are food insecure. More than 50% of the children are actually hungry. Irene, Gulu PhD student, had worked with the community with her work with Save the Children and knew they were organized and highly motivated to move forward. She decided to partner with them for the Roof Forum Rice Community Action Research Project. The project looks at identifying top varietals and training farmers to strengthen the rice value chain, adding innovations like the production of charcoal from the rice processing waste for additional income. So he has seen that it's a learning process both for them and for the students as well. They'll be able to get high income and be able to transform their lives and the lives of people around them. The process is having the added effect of decreasing domestic violence as families work together. They feel that the wounds are healing because if you don't have fights in the house, if you can live peacefully, then the wounds heal with time. Yes. Balancing books with business, Norbert has started a motorcycle spare shop, servicing Border Border, motorcycles that transport most smallholder produce. We do also repair from here. The youth you see down there, they do the repair and they get some small money from here. He's employed his father to run the shop, generating income for the family. Yes, I'm proud of him. Actually, very proud of him. Because he started from a very difficult area. Okay, good evening, Tim, and you're most welcome to our home. This is my mother. She's called Abalo Lili, and this is my father. He's called Olamo Bartolomeo. Lucy's father, like Norbert's, pushed hard for Lucy's education. So the little money that he would earn, he would put it into our education. She likes schooling very much. She just go to school without leaving other children, fighting for, for, for breakfast or what, something to eat. But fleeing from bullets was an almost daily occurrence. Sometimes even when my mother is still preparing for us food to eat, you just hear people running that they are coming. So you just leave the food and you run to the hospital. Yeah. The family would often take refuge in a nearby hospital. In the hospital, it was really horrible. You know, people were very many sleeping under the veranda, even sometimes with no blankets. And you know, people were just crowded there and diseases were very many. Lucy loved going to school and, as a young girl, would risk meeting the rebels on her way to school. When the money for fees ran out, she sat down on the side of the road and cried. A team from NGO Invisible Children stopped to ask her what was wrong 
and subsequently became the first of many to support her difficult, driven journey to be educated. She performed exceptionally and in 2017 was awarded the MasterCard at Rue Forum Scholarship. She's already used the modest stipend to build her parents a new house. I want to be training the, the young girls in the community here. I want to inspire them really that even from grass they can still move and go to grace. Along with her academic studies, she is one of the students that has started Jewfresh, a fresh, healthy juice solution for a thirsty campus. Fruit is sourced from local farmers. The experience at Gulu University has been so good. The model that they're using to teach us, it's making us entrepreneurship-minded. So most of our classmates are inspired to start their own enterprises. Students have started a successful organic honey business which trains farmers in honey production and the honey value chain, finding a market with consumers looking for cheaper, high-quality organic honey. I see myself being a, a big business person, developing this honey, being able to export because organic honey world over has very fantastic market. Students have also visited refugee camps in South Sudan to assist refugees with small business development to improve livelihoods. So from our experience and our expertise in agri-enterprises, we managed to help them on how to better market their products. And if they see anything from Gulu University, they are so willing and happy to receive them. This first cohort of entrepreneurs and change makers in the training are a clear indication of the impact and sustainability of the program. During the graduation, I was able to say, we have international students. Again, trying to refer up, trying to tag them. A diverse group of young Africans who will return to their home countries, spread knowledge and continue to innovate to improve the lives of those around them. After finishing masters, I'll be the only lady with a master's degree in my area. So I want them to see that even when you are really highly educated, agriculture is still the most important thing. The program is currently selecting the third cohort of students. And on a continent home to the world's largest and growing youth population, educated agri-entrepreneurs like these will be the key to shifting the narrative of Africa so her people may harness and thrive off what the World Bank calls the $3 trillion opportunity, the agri-food systems of Africa. If I am from somewhere, I am the very best person who can, who can transform that community.